Niantic bewilders everyone by dropping the most insanely bad Pokemon Go update, Borderlands 3 players actually help advance science, and The Witcher TV show announces its final season. I'm Ash Dixon and this is Jinx News. Yesterday I was just perusing through Reddit as I do when I started noticing a bunch of very angry and upset posts from the Pokemon Go subreddit. Now I've only dabbled in and out of Pokemon Go over the years but even I know that developers Niantic are famed for making all sorts of terrible decisions. So feasting my eyes upon such a torrent of rage I thought oh what have they done this time and I clicked away and oh god holy Jesus Christ this is so much worse than I imagined. So. Let me break down all the drama. Basically, Pokemon Go has just got an update so bad that it's genuinely baffling that this was even allowed to happen. It was promoted as a new exciting avatar update where Niantic proudly stated how your avatar can now look even more like you, which would turn out to be the insult of the decade. In the update, Niantic removed the option to pick a gendered avatar and instead lumped everything together. Now, in theory, I have no problem with this. I like games being more inclusive. But that's not what happened. Instead, players now have to pick from an extremely limited range of options. I mean, just look at this before and after. What was previously an obviously feminine character has been replaced with an androgynous avatar with no hips, a strangely elongated midriff, and Thomas the Tank Engine's face. And that's without starting on the washed out skin tones and the glitchy, funky hair shapes. Because here's the thing, if the aim was to increase the customization options, then they've literally achieved the opposite. Now everyone can make only slight variations to the same androgynous framework. If you're a dude, you just have to settle for slender shoulders. If you're a woman, well, curvy hips or big bums just no longer exist. Like, I'm not exaggerating here. There are only seven face options for everyone, and none of them have lips. And that's why over on the Pokemon Go subreddit, literally no one is happy with this. Like, yay, characters now have more weight options, but good luck defending a gym without flashing your pixelated <laughs> Yeah, Niantic were quick to rectify that one, but the fix really doesn't look much better. And it's just mind boggling how the hell this got approved by Niantic. Can we please just have one good Pokemon game? You have so much money. If I had to bet this was pushed through out of pure laziness. This way they can churn out more cosmetics with a one size fits all approach, meaning they can literally do half the work. And just to top it all off, this is all part of their Rediscover Go campaign, where they're trying to encourage new players back. So I would just like to congratulate everyone involved for being so incompetent at your jobs that it's actually impressive that you are able to dress yourselves and make it into the office without seriously injuring yourselves. Right. Rant over. It's your turn. Am I being too harsh? Is your avatar now a strange husk of what it once was? Either way, let us know in the comments. Four years ago, Borderlands 3 got a little mini game called Borderlands Science. It was a chill, simple title shifting puzzle game for when you wanted a break from psychos trying to rearrange your face with an ax. But it turns out the 4.5 million people who gave it a go have actually helped advance our scientific understanding of over a million types of bacteria. Now, players didn't have to have any biology knowledge to play. Instead, it was all so gamified that they quite easily not realized they're helping scientific research at all. Essentially, the whole thing was a cover for sequencing genetic code. And there's software that's very good at doing this in chunks, but it's not so good at putting those chunks together to get the full final genetic code. That's because those chunks often have over overlapping data and it can be hard for computers to know what should and shouldn't be included. That's a task that humans are actually very good at. Sadly, there's just so much data to go through it becomes an incredibly slow process. Unless you can translate that task into an easy to learn game available to a player base of millions of people. And boom! That's borderland science. And four years on, all of this newfound data is now being used by scientists to research these microbes and how they relate to human health. And that kind of research could manifest into new medicines, treatments, or inventions later down the line. The mini game is still available if you want to give it a go and continue to contribute, but overall, I think everyone involved deserves a good old pat on the back. And if you like contributing to good causes, well then it's probably not a good time to mention our Patreon Jinx Plus. We're not advancing science or anything really, but we are making a whole load of gaming content just for you to enjoy and all in one convenient place.
It's time for the quick fire round. And we're going to start with some Fallout news. That's not about the TV show, but actually is when you consider why it's news. That's because Fallout 4 is Europe's top selling physical game, rising by over 7,000% week on week and sitting above the likes of Helldivers 2 and EA Sports FC. And it's not the only Fallout title that's seen a jump. New Vegas has risen to ninth place, Fallout 3 is in 10th, and inexplicably, the dud that was Fallout 76 is above both of them at number 8. And speaking of adaptations, Netflix have announced that season 5 of The Witcher will be its last. Season 4 is in production with Liam Hensworth taking the role of Geralt from Henry Cavill and 5 will follow right off the back of it. The two seasons will cover the final three books of The Witcher series and Netflix have already begun wetting our appetites by posting this table read over on Twitter. I'm not gonna lie though, it's gonna take a while to get used to having a new lead. And finally, after the disappointing news that they won't be developing Borders Gate 4, Larian have piled a huge amount of pressure on themselves by claiming that they're working on not one, but two new projects. CEO Sven Veink have said they'll both be their best work ever, which obviously he would say, but also I would follow that man into the fiery depths of the Nine Hells. So I believe him. And this is where you like and subscribe. This is where I say have a great weekend. And this is where the video suddenly ends before I get to finish my 